than the find the input impedance, which is not too difficult because input impedance, what is the definition? How do you find the input impedance again? V in divided by I in when I out equals zero. Well, open circuit at the output, right? So this is already the correct one, right? The only thing is, now, how do I see the I in? I shoot an I in. I should I put an I in here. I put V in. I want to find their relationship. It is pretty straightforward for me. I see, well, I see the CGS, right? But this guy is not connected to ground. I cannot do that, right? So what can I do? Again, Mueller, very good, right? So I break this one into CGD times one minus A, which is CGD times one plus GM RD, right? Because this is a common source. And I also break this to the other side is C G D times one minus one over A, which is equal to C G D times one plus one over G M R D, which is small because one over larger number, right? So this is almost the same. And I don't care about this because now this is broken, right? I I don't care what is outside, right? Because I only want to see my input. So what do I see from here? What is the cap what is the impedance that I see? Just as an electron, as the current, you walk into here. What impedance do you see? CGS parallel with this new capacitor, right? So what is the impedance? Impedance of the capacitor is what? What is the equation for uh, for the impedance of a capacitor? One over J omega or S, whatever, right? So because I only care about the magnitude in this case, but in reality, you can put J omega and S omega, right? If you want to know the phase. Now I only want to look at the magnitude. Let me just do the magnitude, right? Is equal to what? C gs plus c g d times one plus g m r d and this is the notorious muller cap you see c g d do you remember c g d is very small if you remember what we discussed earlier about the transistor we have this source, we have this drain, we have this gate, right? Of course, they are separated by an insulator. And the CGD is this tiny part, this tiny overlap part, right? But however, if you put this in a common source configuration, the capacitor you see is not just CGS. Is CGD multiplied by 1 plus 10, maybe, 10 times larger. And what happens if you have a larger capacitor? It means your circuit will be slower, right? So that means the what people will say is that the common source, actually I put it here already, the common source stage suffers the Mueller effect. And you can see from this poll, Right? Because your C in is not just CGS. It's CGS plus CGT times 1 plus GMRD. So it's going to push your pole to lower frequency. While well, you design it, if you did not think about Mueller effect, you just use CGS and you calculate, you say, oh, my, trans my amplifier is going to work up to one, uh, 20 kilohertz. But because of this CGT, it only work at 10 kilohertz. Your product won't work. You need to redesign. Okay. Make sense? Any questions? Purpose of what? Bandwidth spec. Spec specification? 
Yes. So so that's why. But but you thought you made the spec, right? Without thinking about CGD, right? And you spent the whole month designing your circuit. Let's say you did not know about this uh, CG, the Mueller effect before. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I'm saying when you're selecting the parts, would there be a specification on the part saying this is good up to this frequency? Yeah. Because and the implied implication is because of this effect. You have taken all this into account when you do the spec, yes. But I'm talking about you are you as a designer, not, not you as a user. <laughs> Yeah, and you want to sell a product up to 20 kilohertz and you forgot about this Mueller effect, right? Because uh, because you did not come to this class, you, you just uh, stop after midterm two. And then you think that, you remember this figure, you know, this is CGS, it's the largest, right? So you only try to use CGS to design the amplifier. Okay. So when we oh, I mean, uh, for a serious designer, I mean, this simple thing you can use cadence is still give you a lot of insight. But the point is you need to know what it is, right? So if the, you don't design by hand, but you want to have a ballpark correct. So you will, I, I will use hand to try to design and then verify with the simulator. Yeah, and then eventually verify with the experiment. So this is the summary uh, and with the pole at uh, the input and output pole, right? So this is the input and output pole, which is uh, which are here. So you can go back to take a look because my handwriting is not good, but uh, this is a good thing. Okay, so now.